All right, welcome back to the 2023 PDGA Masters World Championships here in Flagstaff, Arizona. This is the back nine coverage of the MP50 round one. This event is presented by MVP Disc Sports. We're at Thorpe Park here in Flagstaff, one of two courses that the players are playing. I'm Stephen Woods, joined with Steve Boylan. Hi, hello, I'm happy to be out here in sunny Flagstaff. Through, uh, through nine holes, Steve, you're the only one to not card a bogey with this featured group. Everybody birdieing the ninth hole, so going into hole 10 here, our leaderboard with Chris Smith at the top, and a bunch of twos right behind him. A lot of people tied just behind Chris. Chris was four down, uh, and he got about eight or 10 people at two down for those first nine holes. Um, Chris played splendidly, and uh, we'll see how we can do here next. Hole 10, uh, 427 feet downhill, 130 meters. Robert uh, is going to lead us off here, uh, throwing a, a disc. Uh, just, just beautiful shot. Uh, it's going to flex it over. It's going to fade right. Um, it does kick off the tree a little bit, so he's got a little bit of work to do yet. And Schwebe coming up with this Hatton and Thummer. Now, this is 427 feet long, and he's throwing this off the tee. You know that he's trying to be as accurate as he possibly can, uh, and, he's, and he's using that. Man, look at that flare skip. It gets it gets up there quite a ways. So we're looking at uh two shots there. Just they're probably they're definitely outside the circuit too. And you're taking a uh route that we hadn't seen yet, the wide hyzer route out to the right. Uh and it's getting down there. It clipped a tree that held it up from probably skipping all the way to the basket. Yeah, it's so the, the concern with that that route is um, first of all you you know it's only straight toward the out of bounds road which is runs along parallel to the right of the of the, the target, and uh, man it's it's a risky shot but uh, again uh, it worked out in my favor on that one uh, got up there for a you know a circle two area so so either a nice up and down or a uh, possible possible long putt you see Jay throwing here um, he's a little bit out he slides a little bit past the target. Uh, you know, he, he's a good putter, so that's that's probably not going to be an issue. You yeah. know, you know, Robert just just nails that approach shot. I would say even with how far back Jay and Robert both were, they definitely were going for that basket. Oh, yeah, these guys don't, they don't, they don't hold up, so. Robert, uh, um, just underneath it. You know, you saw Swebby there, and he, he just, just missed it. Uh, he's from Torboro, North Carolina, so shout out to that area there. Steve, for... Birdie off the top and the flag. Yeah, I, I put a little strong. Um, I was lucky that that uh, that this stayed right there. Yeti with a straddle out. That that tree was dead in his way. He had to really yes, reach out around right that. Yeah, big smile on his face there, hitting that, that one. That's, like that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Solid putt for a par. Everybody else cleaning up their pars. Having it here, there were four on the day, including our leader, our leader Chris Smith. Yeah, the four birdies. Uh, David Harless, he's from uh, Tennessee. Rob Ryan, California. Scott Meyer. Um, he's a, he's a PDGA uh, um, state coordinator for Nevada, I believe. Imagine your favorite disc is unreachable. How will you recover? Have no fear. Introducing the arm. Augmented reaching mechanism. Providing players with over 21 feet of reach, users will face no challenge retrieving trap discs in nearly any scenario. For further flexibility, the arm comes with two grabbing devices, the pivotable rectangle and the double claw. Go to your local retailer and ask for the arm today. Shout out again MVP for sponsoring this World Championships. So hole 11, 272, part 3 downhill, probably the one of the more technical shorties on the course. You really have to hit your gap, but uh, with that slope, it's easy to go jetting past it. So Roger right here on 11 after uh, narrowly missing that birdie. That's a nasty kick out. He went, yeah, that's he his red flag, went out of bounds. He's in a precarious position. We'll see what he what he chooses to do here. Schwebe with that pat and a thumber. Um, this thing is just automatic for him. Look at this thing fly. Gets up there, gets a nice little roll, rolls right behind the target. Now, as I was saying a little while ago, this this hole here is such a 
anomaly because you've been throwing hard all the time. Now they want you to throw a soft touch shot down a hill. And uh, you can see there, I caught a tree and then kicked me Definitely left. Kick, kept you from going OB. Did keep me from going got OB. The flag. You know, got the green flag, but uh, we'll see how what kind of position's in. Uh, Jay gets up there, man, and you know he's confident. He knows what he's doing. Um, throws a nice line, but it gets a little bit tight. He kicks. Yay. He's heading toward, the, and then he catches another tree, catches and gets gets the green. So uh, I was happy for him to see that. Uh, this here is a. You're not going to see this shot too often. This is uh, this is an unusual thing. You throw it basically straight up and down. Try to get it to flow through. Of course, it hits something a little bit early and uh, kind of rolls backwards because it had too much spin on it. Tough play from over there. Both you and even Robert here just yeah. coming off that, that left side, not getting down the hole as far uh, as Jay. Jay got further down the hole. He still has to go to like a patent pending kind of throw here just to yep. get him a line out there. We're looking at Brian's disc that rolled up behind the basket. Crazy drive for the, the thumber. This is a long putt, and a little Anheuser putt. It worked it a little bit, flew by a bit, and then uh, unfortunately had to do that walk of shame going down there because you're still out. It's a whole 11 play, and we even with the uh, – 11 birdies that we had, it still played .23 over par, so it uh, it had a few players' numbers. Like I said, the whole this whole course, you know, you're throwing pretty hard, and you get to this hole, and you just, it, it's a touch shot, and uh, man, I give uh, Schwebby all the all the credit in the world on this for it. That was a nice birdie. Robert taps in for his 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 bogey putt. All right, hole 12 now. We're going back uphill. Uh, probably the steepest hole that we have on the course as far as uphill. 402 feet, par 4. Uh, I mean, really, players are barely getting halfway up this hill with how, with how steep it is here. What's, what's really uh, um, you got to be careful of is when you're walking on those rocks and they start tumbling down a little bit, uh, throwing off them, and you want to make sure you're in the middle here so you have a good footing, uh, the best possible you have. So, um, uh, Schwebby just, he laces one right up there, a beautiful shot, um, and uh, is looking in great position to, to, you know, make a run at that uh, eagle or even just get, get that easy birdie. Um, looks like uh, Yeti tails off just a little bit. Remember, he's throwing uphill in this elevation, so it's hard to keep it turned over. And... Uh, boy you know as Robert does keep it turned over but now he's in a precarious position he's, he's got some work to do too I'm not too far off the fairway though so after carting the first bogey of the round 11 holes into it here trying to trying to get one back on this par four yeah um I put I laced that one pretty hard I yeah got a hold of it really really nice threw it up there and uh yeah I ended up uh, out throwing the guys by a little bit uh but those guys um no problem with this hole I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna do well I mean uh Yeti's got this he comes up he he fires um comes up a little bit short but man he's got a great putt so we'll we'll, we'll see what he's got there I mean, it doesn't feel like you're far from the basket, but it's just, again, so high up the hill that you really have to, to get on it. And I don't think, like, if you're not there doing that shot that Robert just had, that's such, such a tough shot to, to throw something that was forced to turn over and it's, like, nose up up the hill and for it to hold it, not to come out early. And I'm almost going to call it cheating on this. At this some point in time, that thumber's just, uh, just ridiculously good. So, um here I am about 70 feet out, uh, you know. Really give this a run here. Yeah, I, w I was going to give it a run, and I tried to, believe it or not, and um, it's just so far uphill, so much elevation with the, with the altitude, it's just halt, so hard to get there. Treacherous stance, too. Like, you're in the middle of the fairway, but yeah. you see all these rocks that, that Jay's dealing with, and that basket is, you know, as tall as he is, it's over his head. Yeah, he, he's going up about 12 feet in elevation yeah. here, so uh, you can see him climbing. Uh, you know, he, he's all uh, braced up on his elbow and uh, both knees, so uh, that's not an easy track up there for a big guy like that. So so give him all credit. He just hit a nice, nice putt coming up that hill. Um, you know, he does what he's doing. Yeah, huge putt. Webby with a nice uh, little 18 footer for the for the birdie putt as well. Uh, he actually went past the target, so he was, he was able to putt down at it uh, 
that could be a real nice benefit when you're when you're playing some of these to go past the targets so you don't have you have a bigger target looking down into them the whole card here uh get their birdies and for for such a steep hole after coming off that shorty on 12 you know it's that's a solid performance being able to you in the middle of the fairway with the long drive and and Jay and Robert with the scrambles that they had for being That's off the day. fairway. Really, really good to see. Now, hole 13 at 496 feet, pure downhill. Basically, everything that we just did going up, we're going all the way back down now in this hole. This tee pad sets about 200 feet higher in elevation than hole one's tee pad on this course. And it's the highest tee pad that you players will face all week. And, and look at that tee pad. In. Just over 7,000 feet elevation. Look how smooth and uh, they, they got those pavers on there. They really built this out thing nice. They they did a lot of work to this thing, so it's fantastic. The tournament staff, Bill Block, all the the club, the flag staff, disc golf club, definitely had these courses ready to go. And and Swebby comes out. He just fires down there. He he thought it was going to tail right for him. It, it ended up going left, but he gets through a lot of stuff here. Yet he comes up. He's doing his thing. Not only are you guys having to throw downhill, and that one probably didn't get the angle down he wanted. Got a favorable kick, I'd say, like it kicked it back out in the fairway. But I was going to add, you're dealing with those two fences down there, and those are, I believe the city put those in to keep people from sledding because of the amount of trees in this hill. Uh, this flag stuff does see a lot of snow in the wintertime for even being in Arizona. But they're, they're either 8 or 10 feet high. Yeah, definitely. And, they, and they, they are part of the course, so you don't get any relief off of them. So you that's in your head, so... Um, this is actually my first time playing these two holes because I skipped them on practice. Of course. And, uh, man, I shouldn't have skipped them because, uh, man, I, I hit that first tree, get just on the other side of that, uh, that first fence, and I've got about 270 feet to that hole. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's downhill. It's a long way. Uh, it's still a tough shot. If, if the tee was here, it's still a tough oh, disc golf yeah, shot. Yeah, no, it's a tough disc golf shot. Um, I was I was Bring very it up. So, yeah. oh, what a so, nice shot! Slided right up there. That you know that this disc just went exactly the way it was supposed to go, and uh, I'm pretty caddy love it. So get a caddy love out there. Danny, come out and help me out. Uh, Danny Van Arsdale, so he's a good guy. Been helping me out all week. Jay, Jay, look closer to that fence. Really contending with an A2. Just puts one up there. No problem for Jay. He's looking at that and saying, "All right, I've got that. Maybe maybe the, hitting the trees is the best option here." No, Swebby, man, he's gonna go right through these trees. This, this is I still hit it. just barely kissed off the left. Just one. barely kissed off, and he, he thought for sure he was gonna be able to do that. And uh, man, I give him credit because that that is a courageous uh, uh, shot right there to go between those tree trees instead of around them. Uh, we were standing behind him when he said he was gonna go through, and we want to make sure we capture that angle. And he really didn't have a lot on either side. Like he, nice you know, as experienced as he is, the most wins in the PDGA, he felt like. That was the highest probability shot, the score, and and just the slightest kick keeps him outside circle. Here he is putting for that that uh, par, uh, just just ends up laying it up instead of it going in. But uh, man, you got to give him credit uh, because uh, this is such a downhill shot that uh, you want you want to see him do well. Jay puts his in. Swebby's going to clean up here. I know he's a little disappointed. Both Robert and I will clean up. Then. Just a little shameless plug here, Boiling Anchors. That's the shirt I'm wearing. Uh, it's our compound here in Indiana. Um, two courses, pro shop. Building, we're building a dream out here, so come see the dream. Why this golf? It's the people. It's fun. It's the lucky shots. It's the feeling. So come out. Grab a disc or two and let it fly with Lone Star Disc. To add to that, we'll be out there uh, at Boiling Acres filming the Monrovia Masters later uh, later this month, actually. So Callie, looking forward to that. Yeah, Callie McMoran is bringing a Disc Golf Masters tour to our place. Uh, Really excited about having her out there and uh, and, and representing uh, all the disc golf master players. So hole 14 at 258 feet, uh, par three, tight tunnel shot. But you can see from this angle with the catch cam, great angle. Uh, you're really still having to go back uphill. Not as much as hole 12, but uh, enough that makes these uh, already tough 
These are tight lines here. Tight, so tough, tight lines. So, so it, it, you know, and Robert does a fantastic job. He skips past a little bit. He's got a nice little downhill putt at this, probably about twenty feet away. Yeah. And uh, man, that's exciting because you know I'm I'm looking at that and say, all right, that's the line I want to follow. That's the vapor trails that uh, that uh, this uh, V Cobra needs to go with. And uh, well, unfortunately, I let go of it it's a little bit too early. So. You're in the middle, though. I'm in the middle. We'll see how that stance is. We'll... No thumber this time. We've, he's been all over the last few holes. and I mean, rightfully so. I'm not needed on this hole, but go back and watch the uh, front nine coverage if you haven't yet. Brian really bust out that thumber, scrambling and off the tee. Yeah, he catches a little bit of a, a cedar there tree, or a pine tree there, and then kind of slows him down, otherwise he would have been there. Tough stance there, really big yeah. toes in to that log. This just landed underneath it and looked like it kind of... There was not much there. Yeah. I mean, it, you had to throw pretty much... Hard to get it out for that it. That pending. Well, it's just tough. Schwebe would have been a lot closer had it not, you know, ticked that little little brush tree there but uh you know he's fine he's got to look uphill oh, represent the dad hat there just slightly missing on the right side it was a good bed came up just just past it outside but had the height yeah. You know, gave it gave it the run that you wanted uh yeah. sure. Robert with a big birdie here. That was beautiful. Loved lovely to see some birdies there and um rest of us go up there and tap in, get it get finish up the job, I hope. Ended up a little a little far further away than I had anticipated going uphill, but uh it shouldn't be too much of an issue here. Everybody else playing it in. Uh, we'll be back at this course for round three. Round two is going to be at the Little America course. It's going to be a little bit more flatter and, and open. Still treacherous ground, a lot of rocks and uh, centers all over the place. But uh, this course definitely has a lot more elevation changes, I would say, between the two. Uh, definitely packed more with trees. The way it was laid out. It's one of the older courses in Flagstaff. Robert on the tee of 15. Robert's a fantastic player. He's, uh, like you said earlier, he's uh, he took second at the uh, um, Tim Selensky earlier this year. He comes up a little bit short and left. That elevation kind of got him a little bit, put a little bit too much hyzer on it, and didn't maybe didn't plan for that uh, altitude as much. Um, Jay gets out there, man. He, he, he gets plenty of power on this. Um, follows the right, and he's got a putt. He's got a, you know, which he's always got a putt, but, you know, um, happy to see that. Might have a bush to contend with, but definitely up there. Now, that's what I'm sure Jay was looking for. You get just a little bit more height on it. Did he kick off that tree? Did he go he, a little too far right? He just, uh, he put a little bit too much hyzer on that uh, and, and went a little right, kicked off a tree, and then he, he'll have a long look at it, but uh, it may be an up and down. Um, I fired one at this, and then, man, this is looking so pretty. Is it going to? No. No, it didn't go in. Uh, a little bit shameful on that. Uh, we thought maybe it had a chance to go in this. Look at it from the catch cam catch side. Catch cam. Was it? Oh, it just, just hot, yeah. man. From the tee, man, it looked like it was going in. That off the front of the cage. Yeah. What a putt. It, Brian's got that huge. real, like, he puts it really high, but it just dives to the basket. He does. He's and got it, that soft floater comes in. It's always fantastic. Jay, or is, who is that? That was Jay. That was Jay, yeah. Yeah, he Jay. just straddled out from the yeah. bush. And yours, that looked like it was an ace. Yeah. Skipped just a little long, and once again, you find yourself in a tough spot for a putt. Run on it nice, had it had a chain high. It just didn't go the way I wanted to. You just see my little disappointment there because uh, nice going from an ace run to a to a you're still out um, putt. Uh, but it, you know it worked out. 
Um, happy to be part of this, and man, that's a fun hole. Wind's really starting to whip too. Changing directions a lot through these trees, and depending on uh, where we were at on these hills, you could even from player to player it swirls. So the PDGA started the, the Global Master Series this year, and uh, in in the 50 division we have we have four four of the top 20 players in the Global Masters um, playing together for this feature card. Robert Bainbridge there, he's number seven, uh, great player. Um, myself, I'm I'm dropped back all the way down to 20th place. Uh, Yeti's on uh, 15th, but Schwebe uh, with his 30 tournaments, he he's ranked number one. And he's well, he's averaging uh, for the Global Master Series well over 10, 50 rounds. It's, it's pretty amazing. That's, that's awesome to hear and to see just uh, how, how this year shapes up. It's the first year that they've implemented it. So I'm I definitely looking to see what it looks job. like after everybody's been playing. And the way Brian's playing all these events he has all years, I could imagine it'd be pretty hard to catch him. So you saw, you saw Bainbridge just lace the shot right up next to the start. This is a hard hole. Uphill 327, you must go le right to left. Okay, and you got to beat all the trees. Stomps you. Yeah. And, and so he's got that shot. Um, uh, Yeti's up there about 45, maybe 40 feet away, so he's got to look at it as well. Um, and Schwebe, he catches the first tree. Not That doesn't happen too often, so, so you got to give that guy a break. We haven't this. seen a miss from him. Yeah, we haven't seen a Why? miss. Um, I get up there, I'm a little disappointed after the, that ace run didn't, didn't yield any fruit but uh we're gonna see what we can do here no nope 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 don't kick me toward the road oh boy it did ob road on the right yeah there's ob road on the right uh let's let's see i'm still not up yet um schwebby's gonna do his thing here so he pushes it oh man just a little bit long yeah this is a raised target so raised targets in this wind and this elevation can be a little bit tricky here so um i ended up being safe on this um having a had to go big hyzer around the trees uh Crash right next to the yeah oh yeah it, it it is right next to the stump i went a little bit further than i wanted to but we'll see the nice thing is i'm putting level at the basket because i'm uphill from it so um uphill you can see yeti you know really making a big go of it uh you know losing his balance a little bit there but he was well outside the circle so there's no issue Again, yeah, these uphill putts are, uh, you know, with his elevation, he just put a little bit too much on it. A little frustration slap there, so he's got that in there. So as we go into 17 here, Brian started this back back nine off with a par and back-to-back -back birdies, but now he's, he's giving away those birdies. We've seen a couple more bogeys on this back nine from the whole card overall. Holes got a little bit tighter, a lot more elevation changes. Heading in the 17 here, probably one of the easier holes uh, off the tee on the back nine. It's a little bit more open, but still requires a, you to shape a shot that's gonna finish uh, to the right here. And not only is it going towards the right, but it's also going towards the OB, that road right, the whole length of the hole gathering a tree i should say not a bush but this this target is well fitting to get on that bush and so you don't want to be right but you don't want to be too far left because of, you know cause you are going uphill um uh, when you go left so you can lose some distance uh the distance on this hole is uh i think it's right around uh, uh 400 feet 390 feet is what it what it reads um and this hole played over par for the day so robert had a great shot you can saw go up there into the bushes to the right He's going to have a precarious putt uh, if he has one at all because that's it. And uh, this is kind of an errant throw here. We'll see how that ends up. Uh, webby has got that determined look on his face. Getting moisture on his fingers because it's nice and hot and dry out here, so. He's got an open look at it, so he's pretty happy about that overall. He might be a little bit further out. 
Man, it looks like I've been on my knee a couple times here today. Um, you know, you gotta get up to the trees too. You gotta, gotta go around the trees. Get you know, caught that last little limb and it about 18 feet out. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Jay, just far enough back, that the same groves giving you or giving him problems here. He's gonna have to throw something out. But look, man, he runs at it. You know, he's like, all right, if I can get up high enough, I can get it in there. Fantastic. If not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk away with it. And up. A par on this 390 foot. Um, Brian with the cleanest look. At man, the, it looked pretty. So yeah, uh, cool, right. And then uh, the closest drive, but probably the toughest look for it. And he's maybe right around the circle's edge inside there. Yeah, he he's got absolutely no yeah. look at it. Uh, he can't see the. He can see the chains, but it's going to be through everything. It's it's just not not likely to happen. Pretty sure he caught some. Uh, and yeah, he gashed his arm open coming out of there, going oh, in there too. Did he? Did he cut his arm? I didn't really see that. He cut himself so. up in there. And we could see like that that solo birdie from Jared. Just, I mean, it's great. I mean, yeah. it's he had to have that, you know, either a fantastic putt or, or a great drive and a great putt to be able to get this one in because uh, it's well hidden. It kind of sets up really nice for a forehand if you have a 427, 400, 400 foot forehand uphill. Uh, I think that could set up really nice, uh, you know. Jay's just kind of looking around like, all right, we're almost done. Wrapping it up, hole 18, 500 feet, par four. Uh, this is a it's a tough landing zone because you really got to get all the way past the, to this point to get there, and you're and you're asking your disc to go probably 330, 340. So through all those trees, if you can if you can hit this gap and it's slightly downhill, but you, you have a couple of issues. You got one on the right. You got the OB on the right, and if you get hit anything early, um, that could be a factor. Robert Lee's one out there, um, just kind of takes off that tree and ends up behind those big rocks over on the left side. He he can have a he can get up and down. We'll see how that looks. Jay throws his low. He's been throwing uh, these these flat shots all day long, and it's it's impressive because of the you know with, with the elevation and uh, with the altitude that you know pushes things left so much. And Schwab is up here. He, man, this guy's got some power. That's just such a pretty shot. Let's see how it finishes. It finishes, man, he's he's probably only got 60 feet to the hole. He probably threw that 440 downhill. It's kind of a frustration throw for me. I just missed that nice, easy putt. But, man, this is, might be my best throw of the day. Um, it's, it's 500 feet long. Uh, kicks off a tree there, that but I'm just look. outside a circle and just just inside a circle too. Um, so so there's there's an opportunity for an eagle. Jay, man, he 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 kicks off a tree, heads straight to that OB, but just, you know we'll see how that ends up. As you said, like any any tree kicks before the road, and it really leaves you in a tough spot to be able to get to the basket and from Darren Robert too. Off did the he hit the same tree? That might be the same tree that uh, Jay hit. All the way down towards the building. Around the building's OB, but he did stay inbounds. Jay finishing up here. He's like, all right, I just want to get done. Oh, look at that. Beautiful upshot. Uh, tricky. And now he's got uh, pretty much a drop in for Jay. Brian has a... Uh... A little bit longer, but it's still an eagle look. It's yeah, definitely he, for a putter like him, definitely within his range. Oh, it's definitely within his range. Um, that high float putt it just comes up a little bit short, and uh, it, that's impressive to watch. So, so now Robert, who's almost pin high, but way off to the right. That's about all he has coming through. Yeah. So he leaves a little bit short. A little bit of work to do yet. I'm putting here for this for the eagle. Uh, I guess I'm about 50 feet away. Man, just, just come up a little bit short. So, um, 
nice to have a tap in birdie. Uh, I think uh, Schwebby and I both did um, on this par four. Um, there was uh, several. This one did play a little bit easier. I had, I had 32 birdies on this, but we did have some bogeys and everything. And I played 0.35 uh, throws less than par. Good finishing hole for, for Thorpe Park. And then, again, you guys will be here for round three. And uh, I believe you have a semifinal round here at Thorpe? Yes, the semifinal for the top 40% is here. So, uh, well, yeah, we'll see how this goes. and See this course a bit more. Yeah, hopefully uh, all of us uh, on this feature card will be in that and go from there. So through 18, after round one here at the uh, 2023 Professional Masters Disc Golf World Championships, we're looking at uh, Robert four under for the car and he'll be able to retain that spot at the top and then uh, everybody else you and jay everybody's coming in brian on the chase cards or on that third card but uh chris smith shooting seven down that's that's terribly hot that's great golf he played consistently no bogeys uh for him or mike mosher mosher was right behind him with with a six down uh it's impressive that's it that's the word for it you know we we play the sport um to, to get to know other people, to have that community, and uh, it was a great time playing with these guys, these guys and really enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see what they do in the next round. So catch us for round two, uh, MP50 coverage here in Flagstaff, Arizona.